Welcome to a G4 Guitar Student Management Application presentation. What I'm going to do in this video is just give you an overview of how it all works. It's uh, there's a there's a fair bit to it, but I, I will start by going through the top area here, which is the, the this lays out the sections. We've got the dashboard, which we're looking at now. We've got the contact section, which is where you'll find students and your teachers as well. Everything, all your contacts will be here. Then we've got the timetable, which is where your students are going to be in terms of what times they're coming for their lessons, your schedule. And then we've got a section called links, which I'll explain a little bit later. So let's go back to the dashboard. At the top here, I'm just gonna go through each one of these uh, fairly quickly. At the top here, we've got the to-do. And the to-do is basically a, a exactly what it says it's, it's a to-do list where you can add new uh, to-dos that you need to do for your business and your general management I won't go through the details of it here now but that's where that's listed you you can click up here on that little home and it brings you back to the dashboard every time this is for student notes so as you're going to see in a few minutes it will will be able to make student notes and they all get compiled here so you can work through those student notes and you can do all sorts of things such as sort by date sort by staff uh, the type, you know, priority, etc. So you've got all those uh, sortable uh, columns. So again, we'll come back to the main menu. Then we have the checklists, and this is where you can have a layout of each and every student and how they're progressing with the checklist. And again, we'll come back here. Then we've got what we call the print shop. The print shop is where you'll have all the different areas that you can print different things such as certificates, awards and so forth. So you can see the name that I've got here. I can come up here and I can search for whoever I, I want and then when I do find say a particular student there then I can say okay I want to make me a, a certificate. I click on certificate here and it takes me to this which gives me a, a, a certificate and then I can put in the details if I need to change the level or the teacher and then from there I can print it. I can even email it from there. So that's very quickly. I will do other videos, by the way, so you'll be able to see these areas in more detail. Then we've got this here where you can make a new contact. And if you just click on there, that'll take you to this window here where you can start to enter the details of a new contact. The idea is just to fill in all the fields. If you try and get out of this, if you want to come and click finish and you try and escape this, you won't be able to until you either fill in the form, where the, at least put a first name in there, or delete it. So if you want to get out of there, then just click on the delete and there, and that takes you out of it. What it'll do is we'll go to the next person on the, the card. So if you want to get out of that screen altogether after that, then you can click the finish, brings you back to the contacts. And if you want to go back to the dashboard, you can go there. Then you can go to the complete contact list if you like. So if you want to see everyone at the moment, we've just searched for one person, which is Mia here. If I click this little red cross here, it'll bring up everybody. If I just want to see these are the categories, say students, I can click there. If I want to see just the teachers, if I want to see uh, these are suppliers, and then I've got personal. I don't really recommend you use this for your personal contacts. Uh, you've got plenty of other options for that. Try and stick to it with the students, but I have put that there in case you, you really do want to put it there. Okay, so then we go back to the dashboard again, and then you've got a list of inquiries here. So these are people who have inquired, but they haven't enrolled, and this gives you a list of those people. And again, you can sort it in different ways. You can search, uh, you can do follow-up dates. There's lots of different things you can do there. Okay, so then we've got the due. So these are these are due dates. It'll take you to the timetable, and it'll show you a list of people who are due for one reason or another generally it's because they're due to pay and you can see it's actually been sorted by this due column so as we go down here we we can see the red ones mean they're overdue the orange means that it's going to be due within the next seven days and the black means it's not due uh, for at least seven days okay so we go back to the dashboard then we come up to these ones here which are just really reports we can go status so you can see an overview here of how many students are on in different a different status so people who are interested past uh, current inquiries intros booked so that gives you a breakdown of the different numbers then we've got uh, marketing here and you can see where the students are coming from in terms of marketing where your inquiries are coming from if you were looking at this and taking it seriously you would say okay google search is working well for me i've had four inquiries out of eight so 50 percent 
and ROI, and this is where you can actually gauge the profitability, the return on investment of each and every student. And the idea is that it calculates the day based on the day that they started and the date that they ended. So once you put an end date in there, it'll actually stop calculating it. Once, But without an end date in there, it just assumes that they're still enrolled, and then it works out a value for that student and then you get a total. So you can see that the total return, you can even look at a particular period. It's very handy and very, very powerful. Okay, so the next one here is profit and loss. Uh, that will give you a very quick overview. You, you put in the yellow one, so you're gonna, put, you, you're gonna put in your own expenses. You can put in other sales, other income. I won't explain it in detail here, but basically it's gonna give you a bottom line and say, okay, well, you're earning, you know, in this case, $7,000, okay. So from there, we'll come back here. There's a couple of more uh, links here. There's four here. So that's that takes you to the actual franchisee site. So that's for your support as a guitar, uh, G4 Guitar franchisee. Then there's the student website there, the, the Facebook group where we communicate, and the student blog. So they're, they're important links that you want to go to. Now, there's also a bunch of links down the bottom here. And the way these work, uh, that these each of these links, you're going to go into the setup, which is this... Uh, gears here. I'm not going to go into too, too much detail, but basically what the setup is is where you're going to put all the details of your business, everything from your your address to your business name to your website, email address, etc. And then you've got on the other side here where you can put links in. So you can put, for example, your bank account there. So your bank, yeah, that's a link to that. So by putting the, the, the link to your bank there, when you come back to your dashboard, this little icon of a bank here is linked to that. So when you click on that, it will go to whatever link that you put in there. So that should really be your bank. Things like here were account software. You can put, if you, you know, I use QuickBooks, so I can put QuickBooks in there and it'll take me to my QuickBooks account. And then I've put in here three extras here, link one, link two, link three. And again, if we go back to the dashboard, you can see L1, L2, L3. That can be anything you like. Just something that you might want to have here handy on the the front page on um, the dashboard so you can easily get to whatever that happens to be it might be an external uh, spreadsheet that you use whatever there's lots of lots of things that you can do with that okay so if you come across to uh, the contacts here the way the contacts works is that this the basic breakdown here is that at the top here you've got the students details so it'll show who they are that doesn't show much because it's only got their name um, but if we sort of scan through a little bit more you can see for instance, we've got the student's uh, mother's name here, the father's name, then we've got an email address and a phone number. So you've got the contact details very easy to find, uh, very easily accessible there. And at the top here, you can type in a name just like I did before. So you put in the name of someone you're looking for, and there, so of course sometimes there's going to be more than one person with the same name. And to to move through the op the options, you would just go here. There's only one Mia, so that's why I'm not finding one more than one Mia. If I put in something like let's say Jim. So Jimmy Page, uh, and then yeah, there's a, there's a, there's more than one Jim there, so that's why I'm coming up with the two. So you just go through that if you don't find it straight away. You can also go onto the icon here, which will take you to the full list, and it'll show you. And from here, you can go back to the student from here. So other details here, if you look down in the bottom uh, right of this box, uh, sorry, by the way, the colors represent the status. So you can see the status up here where it says intro. Uh, if I just clear that off for a minute, and it clears the name search, and I go through there, you can see that's teacher, intro, current, the blue is a current student, uh, booked is the orange, and yeah, so you've got other options here. Now, down here, and there's a lot to explain here, so I won't go through it, I'll just go very quickly. You've just got a few options here for, this is the checklist, that's the print shop, this is the um, that's for making an award, and this is the important one is the edit. So if you want to edit some details, change their name or their um, you know the address, etc., then you just click edit and come into here. You've also got over to the right here is where the student will appear on the timetable. So you can see here that it gives you all the details. You know exactly where they are. So if you're looking at this particular student, you can say, okay, they're a senior one. They're due to pay on the 28th of the second. They're Monday, 11.30 uh, with the teacher, Emma. And you can even click on that. Just click on the icon there and it'll take you to the timetable. And you can see it's grayed down the bottom here. So it shows you exactly in context where that particular student is. If you want to go back to that student, then you just click on their icon next to their name. 
There's, there's some other details here where you can add notes. Again, those notes you will be able to access from your dashboard, and then you can add songs that they want to learn or that they like here. And you can also add practice log uh, entries, whether you're doing it by the week or the month, you just add in whatever the date is there and then how many minutes they did, and then obviously you start again. So you get a total. And these each of these you can actually go and have a look at and see totals. But again, I'm not gonna go into details on those. I'm just giving you an overview here in this video. So the next one is the timetable. If we just have a look here at the timetable, the way the timetable works is that going from left to right, we have the room number, then we have a tag which tells us what kind of student they are. Are they intro student? Are they a group student, which is the green one? The cal stands for calendar and cas stands for casual. So that's just a one-off lesson. The Then we've got the due date here, so that's generally when they're due to pay. Um, you might have another reason for the due date, it might be the date that they actually do a casual lesson. Then we've got the instructor who's gonna be teaching them, then the level, uh, and then the day and the time. And things like the day and the time you can't change. These are all, these are fixed. And uh, again, I won't show you in this video, but you, you, there'll be another video which will show you how to set all that up. So you only see the times that you want to see. You don't want to have times in here. If you don't teach on a Monday at 6, 6 a.m., for instance, you don't want it coming up on the timetable, but it is in there if you want it. So say this time here where there's no student here, I can click on the drop down menu and then I can choose who is going to go into that time, bang, and then if I want to go back and have a look at that student, I can just click there and it takes me straight to the student. It's really handy and, and this is the power of this particular program is that it allows you to move between the student and the timetable uh, very easily and very quickly. So you can see here, for instance, I've got a few times uh, you know, under my name here, using my name, uh, it's off, is it, as if I was the student. So if I go here, it'll take me to that time on the timetable. So it's very, very easy to do. And if I'm looking for times, let's say I wanna see what available times there are, I can click on these days, these are the green ones, and they tell me what's available on a particular day. Uh, these ones tell me just the times that have been booked, Monday, Tuesday, etc. And just one quick little thing here, you can see how that one's blue and the others are black. What that means is that there's a comment if I click on that, it'll take me into that screen and it'll show me there's a comment here. So whenever there's a comment appears uh, on any of these, that'll turn blue. So you'll know to go and look for that. I won't go into the details of all this, but these icons here all do different things. So just as one example, the blue one there, it'll show only the intros. So if I click that, you'll only see intro students there. If I click the green one, it'll only show me group students. So they, they all have different functions, such as deleting students and uh, printing, so forth. So again, that's for another video. So the the last screen here is called links. And the what this is, is a very simple setup, but it's, it's again, very, very handy. And the idea is it gives you a place to sort your links. And you can see if I click on A here, it'll show me just my A links. And these might be my most important links, whereas my B links are not as important, but they're still very important and I wanna be able to get them. So, and you could have other reasons. You could assign these letters, you, know, you might put G as your G4 uh, links, you might put you know, H as your home links, whatever. So this is a place that you can really uh, sort everything very easily and very quickly to, you know, again, mainly to do with your business. So that's the layout of that. Now, if I just come back to here, just one other thing is, or a couple of other things, is that this is a zoom here. So by clicking this plus here, I get I can zoom into the screen or I can zoom out, and that allows me to, you know, depending on what, whether you're working on a smaller screen, a laptop, etc., or a desktop, that'll allow, allow that. This one over here, that actually shrinks it right down. So you won't see this here, but I'll just see if I can pull it across. It just shrinks it down into a little icon like that. So it puts it up in the very left part of your screen. And that's that. And uh, the last one is this information icon. So if you go through each page, you'll see that little blue eye there, and that'll take you to a video where you can watch uh, information on this particular uh, section. Okay, so I'll wrap it up there, and if you have any questions, as always, feel free to message me. Thank you.